name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always and welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, the host of this program, known here on social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your soul brother. Number one, how many of you are familiar with the fictional character called Superman? Superman can jump over high buildings, x-ray vision, super strength, outrun trains. Superman is super incredible. Where does Superman come from? Superman was created by Siegel and, Sch and Schuster, I believe. Two teenage Jewish boys in the 1930s. <clears throat> Teenagers. They wanted to create something that they could not themselves be. They described themselves basically like a nerd. So they invented this character, Superman, extremely intelligent, brave, strong, gave Superman the attributes that maybe one day they could be as they grow older, but, or maybe they had the potential, but that was not them then. So Superman is a figment of a teenager's imagination of what they want to be what they wanted to be, but could not be at that time. I use that as an example in relation to those who come out here on social media, who come out in the public, and they say to the world, Give me my land back. Give me my reparations. It is the same thing. Because the reality is this. You're never going to get your land back. It's not going to never happen. That's not how the world works. Conquerors, I don't give a care what their race is. And you learn this in school and you have done your research and you got the information. That's not how living with a patriarchal mindset, that's not how things work. You are conquered. Your family, your tribe, your nation is conquered by another. Usually what happens is sometimes they wipe you out. You go extinct. So if you go extinct, you cannot come on YouTube and TikTok and run your mouth talking about uh, give me my land back. You don't even have life. They wipe you out. 
There are tribes, there are nations, there are families that's been on this planet we don't know nothing about because when they were conquered, everything about them, the conqueror destroyed. Sometimes the conqueror will spare the women and children because the women can make more babies for them easy to control because they are weak and the children are weak and the children can be programmed to serve the conqueror. They usually will wipe out the elderly because the elderly contain the knowledge of the past of the way things used to be. We cannot have that. So we will destroy, we will kill the elderly and we would kill the men because the men are stronger. It's a possibility at some future time they might mess around and rise up again because they have the memory that they were conquered. So we must destroy the men and the elderly. And they call even to this day when the conqueror takes women as treasure or as a benefit to or as a benefit when conquering they call it booty and we love booty even to this day booty is a treasure and we and these men like watching booty This nation is obsessive, fanatical over the booty. They go and spend thousand dollars to get booty. But for hundreds of years, for a long time, they made us, they made our women feel ashamed because of their booty. Now everybody won't booty. They booty obsessed. But booty is another name that you give to somebody who you conquer. You take, destroy what they have, and you take what's left as booty. Give me my reparations. Give me my land. Generations pass by. If it's your land, where's your title? Nobody owns land. You only own enough as long as you're able to defend whatever you claim. If you cannot defend your little piece of so-called what you own, you're not going to own it very long. You only can own it as much as you can defend it. Just like in this country, you own your house. You think you own your house until the government says or puts it under public domain. We will give you a certain amount of money for your loss, but we need this for a highway or, or a parking lot or whatever. You're forced to give it up. If you own it, how can you be forced to give it up? Because you never own it. How are you going to own something and have to pay taxes on it the rest of your life? Because you don't own anything. That's an illusion. That's fantasy. It's fiction. In the United States. There are some places. On the earth that I was told. When you buy the land. You actually own. You don't pay no taxes or whatever. This is my land. And you do what you want to on your land. That's not the case as you know. Living in the United States. You don't pay taxes. All of it will revert to the state. It will go somewhere. You're not going to own a damn thing. We live in this fantasy. We don't want to accept the reality of things. <clears throat> you don't even own your life. Any sucker can use a knife or a gun or they can use their bare hands and strangle you to death. We don't even own our lives. 
That's out of our control. Our own. You, we don't own nothing. If it can be taken away from you, you don't own it. It'll just transfer to the new owner because they took it from you. I want my reparations. Nobody has to give nobody reparations. There's no international law. There's nothing that says somebody has to give you reparations. Reparations is a mercy from a conqueror that they confess and they admit that they've done something horrible to another and out of their mercy, out of their compassion, they say, look, we're going to try to help you get your life back together. That's what reparations is. <clears throat> reparations is to repair. To repair the damage, the harm that somebody caused to you. Or a people. If you are in a car accident, that's a form of reparations when you file a lawsuit and they and you're awarded damages being in a accident. That's a form of reparation. And reparations is really is not really meant to make you a millionaire and a billionaire overnight. What it's supposed to be designed for is to pay you monetarily for your suffering, punitive damages your physical suffering and what you lost because you was injured. So when you talk about reparations for a people, it's not supposed to be and it should not be for individuals. It should be for the people. So that the people can repair themselves for what was done to them. An individual has no desire to repair nobody except their personal pocket. And this is one of the reasons why so many do want reparations. Because they would hope to become an instant millionaire for their own personal enrichment. It is not for the benefit of the people who were harmed because of that. Superman is a character designed by teenagers to make up for what they could not be. So Africa or even this new aboriginal stuff, it is manufactured to build a fictional world like Krypton based on an idea of what people thought life was prior to European colonization. They want to try to go back in time. When we don't live that way no more. There are those in the past who did not want to give up and did not ever believe that a machine would take the place of the horse and the oxen. You mean to tell me one day we're going to be running around in, in some kind of machine going to take us from point A to, to, to point B? <laughs> That's not going to happen. A machine going to do that. And when it started to become a reality, they did not want to accept it. And until the day they died, they were still trying to ride their horse and buggy and whatever. 
They could not accept the reality that life changes. Whatever it was in the past, you don't know nothing about it. At least those people, they lived during a time of horse and buggy. You never, you don't know nothing about life and a horse and buggy. You only know the now. But we make up this, this fantasy Wakanda for Africa and we make up this fantasy life with being an aboriginal or we make a fantasy religious life tribe of Shabazz and God going to come and do this for us and give us this life and we have a delusion and we fall in love with these ideas we fall in love with Superman and Krypton want to be something that we're not Something that we might have the potential, but we're not. Right now, we're not. So we imagine this fantasy Africa. And we spend thousands and thousands of dollars on fantasy. And you spend millions of dollars going to see the Black Panther because that movie feeds your fantasy world what you think. Africa supposed to be. And the preacher talks every Sunday. Feeding this fantasy world. This Krypton. That we made up for ourselves. Everything. Going to be alright. Look up in the sky. There's a bird. There's a plane. It's Superman. Look up in the sky. Here comes Jesus. Look up in the sky, here comes the mother plane. Look up in the sky, here comes this God going to kill all the white people, make them slaves for us. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. It's all fantasy world. It's the same thing. We can't accept reality. We can't accept ourselves of whom we are. So I will make and create the invisible world. Superman has made millions and millions of dollars. But Superman is not real. The Bible Makes millions and millions of dollars. But it's not real. Nobody is flying. Nobody is being raised from the dead. No mother plane in the sky. There's no people from the tribe of Shabazz coming to save us. But it's. It feeds the fantasy of those with immature minds that cannot accept the reality that we don't drive, we don't ride in horse and buggy anymore. We drive cars that go a hundred and more miles per hour. And so while the black man and woman, so brothers and sisters, you stuck in the past, the world keeps turning and leave you behind. And you wonder, what's going on? How come we can't progress? Because you're living in a past, you live in a fantasy world that don't exist. Look up in the sky, there's a bird, there's, there's a plane. You ain't no Superman to come save you. And Superman don't exist. You don't have no love for yourself. 